Tom Matthews here from uh, Matthews Engineering. Um, what we're going to try to do today is we're going to try to uh, shrink fit an end mill into an end mill holder. And um, what we've got is a, a one inch uh, ball end mill that um, is uh, welded shank. I suspect it's out of spec. The shank is, uh, when we mic it, it's uh, measures 0.9999 and 1.0000 in some places. So Weldon shank is supposed to be at least a ten thousandths under an inch, uh, but uh, as much as five ten thousandths under. And so this one's about exactly one ten thousandths and we can't get it to fit into any of the one inch tool holders here. And normally this isn't a problem. Most of the end mills uh, don't have a problem. This one I think is made in China. It's probably technically in spec, um, but again, it's right on the high end of the spec. So it's, uh, it either needs some force or something to get in there. But what we're gonna try today is uh, to use some liquid nitrogen to uh, shrink the tool. The tool is a one inch diameter tool. When it's cooled down to the liquid nitrogen temperature, which is minus 196 Celsius, um, it's minus 321 Fahrenheit, so it's very cold, much colder than, uh, than dry ice. Um, it should shrink by about a thousandth of an inch per inch, so should bring us down to a range where it should go in there. Now one thing that I'm worried about is that, and that you don't have a problem with when you heat the tool is we'll probably get some frost on there and that might cause the tool to jam so uh, this may not work most people don't you don't see a lot of people doing this and I suspect the reason they don't do it is because of the frost I issue um, the frost will put some moisture in there so um, I put some uh, some number one grease on the inside of the tool here um, to uh, you know help protect it from uh, corrosion in there when the, once the tools in there um, these tools do have a, uh, when you take the, the uh, pull stud out, um, there's a, a hole through there, so we should be able to press the tool back out. I mean, that's, that's one of the concerns whenever you shrink fit something is uh, how we're going to get it back out. Of course, you can um, heat the tool, outer tool, or the, the um, uh, cool, freeze the inner tool again, but once they're together, it's harder to get a good differential heating. So. Uh, so sometimes you got to think ahead, you know, how am I going to get this thing apart? But the good part is there is a hole all the way through here so we can put that in the press and push it out. And um, it won't be so tight uh, that it won't come out because it's just like any other interference fit. So let's go ahead and get some liquid nitrogen here. Um, I've got a 10 liter doer of liquid nitrogen here. Uh, the liquid nitrogen is about, um, I paid about $10 a liter, um, but some places will be cheaper than that. Um, it, uh, in a doer like this, this is a 10 liter doer, it's supposed to last, uh, you should be able to have it around for 45 days, so if, if, um, if you do stuff like this or if you shrink fit things um, and you have a good doer, you can have the nitrogen in your shop uh, without having to you know, constantly uh, have it refilled uh, for quite some time if you have a good doer. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and use this uh, plastic container to freeze the, uh, the tool. And let's go ahead and get some liquid nitrogen out of the uh, out of the tank here. The liquid is, um, you want to wear gloves when you're handling liquid. If you get the liquid on your skin, uh, it'll mostly bubble off. There's a, a layer of vapor that uh, prevents it from directly, you know, sapping the heat out of your hand right away. It is still, you know, dangerous. What is particularly dangerous is uh, once you've frozen this tool, you do not want to touch the metal with your bare skin because the metal will not have the liquid, you know, vapor barrier that you get uh, with the liquid nitrogen. So, so don't be fooled. You know, if you work with liquid nitrogen a little bit, and you start to become think it's safe. I do remember that you got to have gloves on. I'm wearing some pretty thick leather gloves here. You can still feel um, when you pick the tool up, even through this leather, it's cold enough that you can feel that it's cold. Um, let's go ahead and get that covered up, get the tool cooled down. I'm going to lower it in there kind of slowly because it'll start to boil that nitrogen. You should also do this um, in a well ventilated area. So, um, you know, because you can see there's a lot of nitrogen coming off of here. The nitrogen is not dangerous in itself, but what is dangerous is um, is if you're in a you know phone booth or a small uh, office. Um, I'm in a 5,000 square foot room right now, so there's plenty of air in here. But in a small room, this could this will push the oxygen away, 
and if you were in there for an extended period of time, you could, um, you know, you'd get sleepy or you'd pass out from uh, insufficient oxygen. I want to make sure I get that really cold. I did try this once before, and I don't think I had it cold enough. So let's make sure we get it super duper cold. I just have that cloth there today, um, just in case I spill some. If you spill a little bit, it's not a big deal, it'll just scatter away. But uh, this will help it from scattering too much here. Alright, so we're going to see if we can get it to fit in there. This may have a lot of frost on it, that'd be the problem. Well, there we go. So that did go in there. Um, although it, it, uh, it definitely joined with it quickly, and I wasn't able to get it quite to where the Weldon shank, you know, is where I'd want it perfectly. Um, although I do think this will work uh, for my purposes. So there you go, there's uh, liquid nitrogen shrink fit tooling. Um, in some ways a lot simpler than heat fitting, um, but, uh, but it should work. And, uh, and this is Tom Matthews from Matthews Engineering. Thanks for watching.